welcome to another live demonstration. So this is the last for 2018. Um, and it's something I wanted to try. It's a, t a technique that I've, I've seen and really wanted to try. So what I've done is I've taken an image, my own image from the Yorkshire Wildlife Park where the polar bears are. And what I'm going to do is called a galaxy silhouette. Um, and that means I'm painting inside. You'll see as I go along. So I'm going to wet the paper first because that allows the colours to move. I've tried it different ways, but this works in a way I, I like. So just wet the paper using the imitation sable, the SAA imitation sable. I think from now on, this is going to be one of my go-to brushes. It has the fabulous holding power of the sable, but it also has that spring and sharpness you get with the synthetic, which is why I like the synthetic, because I like the feel and the spring of the bristles, but which I didn't feel the Kalinsky sable gave me. I found it was a bit too soft for the techniques I use. And this just offers all of those fabulous qualities I'm looking for. So it works like a sable, but also has that um, holding power, that point, that spring of a synthetic. So this will be my go-to brush pretty much from now on. So just wetting. And you will see if you tip your head any areas that haven't been wetted. Okay. Sometimes I tint the um, watercolour slightly just so I can see it. But I want a, a nice, clean, bright, because the colours are bright and I want them to stay bright. So. Turquoise, no, I might use, I'm going to start with the turquoise. So this is the SAA turquoise, really lovely blue green. And I'm going to use it quite w wet. Also, I know that the colours will dry a lot lighter. But look how they're moving on the page. They're kind of making their own patterns, which is exactly what I'm looking for. So just brush on some colour. I can add to and um, move around, but with any watercolour painting, it's always easier to put on lightly first because it's harder to take off. I'm going to use the quinacridone magenta. And drop that in. Now my page must be this way because it's dropping down. Now what I could do is I could move and lift my page, tip it, if it wasn't taped down, <laughs> um, in order to get things to mingle um, using gravity. It's taped down, so. Shall we lift your board up? Shall no, it's that? absolutely fine. I can cope. As a Christmas present for you, Anita. I can cope. It's fine, absolutely fine. And now I'm going to use the ultramarine violet. Let's just add some dark. So I, even though the polar bear is what looks white, we do know, because I've spoken about it before, that they've actually got transparent um, hairs that reflect the light and often the polar bears at the Yorkshire Wildlife Park can look quite a muddy brown because they've been rolling in the mud and they're just covered in the dirt. Just thinking about a lot of this is I won't know what it looks like until it's done till it's dried. It's looking a bit too stripy at the moment, i.e. the colours are a bit stripy. But the difficult thing is I'm trying not to overwork 
I am looking at shadow because it's, I still want to retain the shape of the polar bear, even though I am actually also adding the colour in and working inside. So what I'll do is I will just make a softer, and even though this is just a first layer, I can soften and just maybe lighten at this stage. I can add back. This is the stage you have to also be careful with about making back runs. Um, which, to be fair, I don't mind in this kind of work because it kind of helps. It, it just adds to the texture. But a back run happens when you start to, you still have a drying layer and then you add your wet layer on again. And if it's a, a thinner consistency, it will just push away the pigments. And I, guess I try to do these on occasion because I think they have a really nice aesthetic effect. But when you want to do them, they just don't work. I'll just try and take away some of this blockiness. Okay, so I just need to have a blast and dry that layer. The reason being is if I keep working on it, I will overwork it. And I won't see what the colours are going to be like, so. Blast. So you can see how that changed, and it, it's a first layer. It's I want the lightness and some of this whiteness still to come through. So I'm going to start from this area and work my way through. Just going to, I've got no real plans. It's just see what happens. Just put in. Another layer. And I'm going to mix colours, see what happens. Because what I want to do is I want to create kind of like a mounting scene within the shape of the polar bear. So the silhouette is the bear. And then I'm going to create a scene within it. And what you need to do again, it's layering. So this is just creating some shapes. These aren't going to be the finished shape, but while the paint is still wet at the top, they will bleed and they start to make that Christmas tree effect really easily. I'm just taking off, mopping up, using my light brush because I want some more tonal values than I've got in here. So this is just the first layer. I can go back in, I can add. So a lot of time I will just use a clean brush just to move and work with the colours I've got on here. So that's still wet. So I need to continue to work along the bottom. Because else I'll be just using the hairdryer and blasting all the time. Which is not helpful for you. Let's change to a pink. Now I've not got huge plans. I don't really fully know where I'm going to go. I just will work on it, build it up, and see where it looks right. I like the colour there. You start to darken off here because you'll have some shadow. So this is a bit of the um, ultramarine violet and the 
um, turquoise. So that's quite dark at the moment, so in with a brush and start to soften. What I'm going to do is make the tree shapes as part of the shadow. I also want to keep the lovely colours I have put on already without losing the without overdoing it and going back in and losing what I already have. So it's quite dark here because this is where the pour right. I'm still taking reference from the original because I want to just make sure I put the shadows in and that it's going to finish looking like the animal I'm painting. So even though I'm not looking at it as much as I would do if I was doing a true painting of the polar bear, I'm still looking at it, especially for values, tonal values. So this is the arm. And it's there's a dark area here. If I get lost, I'll just stop and then I'll come back. So I'm going to... Go back in here, and I'm just adding some detail. So just using the turquoise, just taking it out at the bottom, I'm taking it outside the lines, just to give it a little bit of, a little bit bit more, something different than it's just a single solid shape. So using that turquoise and bringing that in. So you can see now I'm strengthening the colours. I've put a black on my palette because I can mix quite dark colours with the colours I've got, but it's, it is easier with the black. So just mixing. It's so much easier to strengthen colours as you go along than it is to suddenly realise that actually that's too dark and I need to maybe take it back. So just adding. I've just got to remember not to make it too even. This is so difficult. Your brain tells you that you want it to be very even. So now into the mid quinacridone. And I could do this by tipping the board up and letting really wet paint run down. Okay, let's put it, push it into the... Let's start to bring up some shapes so they look like a tree. I mean, if I had more time, to be honest, I could really dry each layer and put even more layers of the trees coming forward. So maybe three or four. I might be able to get two or three more. But again, it's all to do with timing and just allowing things to dry. So I know I've said it previously, but have more than one on the go. And then you can, you don't have to finish working. That's very solid. I'm going to go little, little brush. It's just give me much more um, uneven look. I was quite solid with that brush. So into the ultramarine violet. Just trying to keep the colours. And you can see it is, you know, quite detailed, even though it looks quite quick at the beginning. This is where you start to, you know, just thinking about 
detail. So the arm comes around here. I think he's, he was sitting. Uh, we'd not had any sun for a few days. And this was on top of a hill. And the sun had come out. So he was just sitting there, sunbathing. I don't know which one it is. They, they've all got names, but you can't always tell which one's which. So I'm not going to tell you which one this was, because I honestly am not too sure. So again, I am actually constantly thinking about not being too even. So put this layer on. Let it dry. Mix your colours. These colours actually work really nicely together as well as individually. So they mix well and they all kind of stay, you know, it doesn't seem to add an odd colour. So let's very lightly put some colour in here. So that's given me. I would say a mid layer of trees. This, these are too much the same size. But I'm going to hopefully put another layer on and then let's put, I can. So I suppose trees are quite even, but I'm just trying to vary the sizes. And I've got different tonal values in there. What I don't like is I don't like this line I've got at the back. So again, just a wet brush. Not too wet, because that will cause your back runs. I can soften. So this is, you know, if you've got that area you just don't like or you're not comfortable with or you want to alter, you can. This is the beauty about watercolour. It's not always fixed and solid you can just go back in and alter and adapt it so I don't know if you can see any real difference to that but for me that's just softened and let's see if I can take out this bit yes 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 yes, yes. I've gone over to save the lines for this I want to stay in the lines so it's all to do with just softening right I can move on now because I need this area to dry so let's look at a bit more colour. I'm going to do the same, but I'm also going to think about the shape of the arm here. So it's, I'm going to just consider where I place the trees. So a mix of that ultramarine and the quinacridone. Just some more neat quinacridone. So it's quite nice. It's nice and wet at the moment, so. Just maybe a little bit more. So I can always add that little bit if it's getting too even. So constantly just thinking about not only your tone of values, but also balance, colour balance, positioning, composition. It's something that you can often see at the end, and that's when you can alter but it's just something that you, you should be aware of as you're doing it as well. So, trees need to darken here. That's just, for me, I've just done that as reference because I can, I will do it once I go on to here. I've got grubby fingers. Right, let's carry on. So it's, it's all just often repeating the same shape. I'm 
going to go here because I want to define the light. I want this a little bit lighter. And I know with the galaxy, you can put your skies and um, light on, but I tend to work in a way that I like. So there's lots of different ways. I've seen you get all the background on and then you splatter white, which I will do, and you splatter the stars in the sky and then you start to do this bit. But for me, just taking that tree into the shadow, just making it not only part of the bear, but so now I'm mixing some of the turquoise and the um, ultramarine violet. So still keeping that same ultramarine violet tone, but just slightly changing it as I go across. Sorry, I t I'm tending to drift with what I'm saying because I'm getting a bit engrossed. Really enjoying doing this. Again, looking at shadow, but I don't want it as harsh. So as I'm moving up, I'm getting a little bit more turquoise and a little less ultramarine. And actually, also the fold of skin here. I want to show it as a fold, but I also want to just bring the trees in and over it. Let's see. Let's see what I can do. Again, this is probably, I'll add another layer. And like I said, I have put black in, but what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to just used black on its own, which you can do, and I've seen some of these silhouette pieces use the black as a really hard colour. I'm just going to use it to add to the colour to soften. Um, just give me that darker tone without making it completely black. So, quinacridone with the ultramarine violet. Because I'm impatient, I'm jumping all over the place. Let's just put this layer on, let it dry, and then we'll come back and start to add. But I hope you can see how it is starting to build up. And this isn't a finished layer. This is just, you know, stages. Some more ultramarine violet. Take that in. Now push. Oops. So, like I say, these colours work so well together. That it doesn't matter which brush you, which colour you dip your brush in. It is going to just work. I'm going to just take it down as, I'm, as if as if it's on a slope there. So, also looking at the positioning of your trees. What shape is it making? Is it working as a shape? Okay, so we have. To go magenta. Just want to again looking at tonal value. There's another fold here. So I'm just, and you can see 
the colours underneath are still staying where they are. I've not got that dark value on yet. Um, where's the arm? So we've got a fold here. And then we have an arm here. Which goes down into the paw, which comes down here. But you can't actually, on this photo, you can't actually see his paws. I think they're very much like that. I think he was too far away and too deep in the grass to actually see them. So this is where you have to kind of use your imagination as well as understand the anatomy. And it's this bit here, because I think he was sitting with his legs really splayed out at the back. So these are his back legs. So making a valley just to show some of the shape of where the paws are. Okay, so I'm going to go back into this bit um, and I'll probably do this bit. We'll get it to dry and then I'll start to... I'm going to add some black now. So black. but I'm only using it as a way of just giving me a slight darker of the original colour. I think that's called shading. So you hear tint and shade. I think shade you add black to a colour. So you start with the original colour you add black to, a tint you add white to, and it's often seen in pastels. So a tint is a add more white or more black. Um, and the original is usually a middle value like five and that's the starting colour. So even though I want a darker shadow, I don't want to lose the turquoise colour. So I'm going to mix between the black I'm not going to also be careful not to colour the fabulous areas I've got behind. So I'm going more into the ultramarine. So again, ultramarine, violet this is. So it, it splits with a slightly pink colour and a bit of black. So even though I've got a dark colour, I'm still going to use it quite wet because it just will make the colours ping. And it's like I say, it's much easier to add colour to than it is to take it away. Just slightly adding colour as I go. Could drop. So all of the time I'm just blending in the colour I have. And what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to take the trees over. I like some of that light colour I've got under here. So just going to some tiny trees and keep that shadow or light area in there so I don't have to fill I've seen them solid very solid and so the, the final layer is a very solid layer but I'm just think I quite like all the colors I'm getting and I'm going to leave some for me, that just makes it a little bit more 
a, a differential, different tones rather than a very solid finish. But it's totally a choice of how you want things. So now into the magenta with some of that black. So in this case, I'm using the black just as a darkening colour, not too much. So I've no problem. Yes, you should mix your own greens, your own blacks, and you get some fabulous colours if you do. You get um, blue blacks, brown blacks, um, and they're a really useful thing to do. But sometimes it is just as easy to use a ready-made black just to slightly darken the colour you already have. So not only am I darkening, but I'm also using more colour. So less water, more pigment. Just thinking about balance. What can I do? Some little trees here, just tiny. So there I've created a hill, just, so not everything is all one directional solid. So I'm coming into this area here, which is going to be quite dark because it's where the arm falls round. So I just want to make that clear. And that's probably going to be one of the darkest tones. Still using the colour I have. But not overdoing it. Not again. Still that, that lovely light area there works. Okay, I think I'm done there. If I do this bit, then I'll give it a blast with a hairdryer and we'll take a short break. And then we'll carry on and start to build up. So this is darker, so let's continue with that colour. Let's make it look like a tree. Let's not make it look like it was an accident. Okay, that's got a lovely colour behind, so I don't want to lose. I'll use a smaller tree. What I am doing is each time I can see the colour change, it, I am still using that colour and that bit of black. So the original colour here, I had the magenta and black because I had quite a magenta tree in the background. Now I'm starting to add the ultramarine violet. But it, you can use this with any colour. These colours I chose, I mean, to be honest, I've seen a lot use blues and greens because of the northern lights and the light colours that you see in that area. These are just, to be honest, some of my favourite colours, which I just enjoy using. So that's really some of the main reason for using it. And... I notice that they are fading, so they're not actually as harsh as when I'm putting them on, which, again, I like. So let's keep some of this colour here. Let's do some... That's quite harsh, so it's, again, wet brush, soften. You don't have to paint every individual leaf on every tree. What you can see is, it doesn't work there, and I'll come back to it. This is part of me thinking about it. And as you're working on it, you're glancing at other areas because that's part of the composition. So, and so I'm seeing areas that, oh, I need to fix that. And I'll do it straight away. The reason being is I'll forget. So if I see an area that I do need think needs fixing, I will jump back into it, which is a bit of a pain for Gary, but 
That's just the way my... I've got plenty of cameras pointing at you. That's okay, thank you. Okay, getting there towards the end, so let's just... Let's change colour, let's do a bit of... Go back into the... Such a lovely colour. Like I say, I probably would have made it run so it was a little bit more less contrived, but it works. Let's do some fabulous colours there. Take some colour back. A little bit more. Really, just a little bit darker here. Okay, so what we'll do is I'll give that a short blast in the break and we'll come back and continue with the rest of the bear. <laughs> Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA is here to inform, encourage, and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits, including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles, and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalogue with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland. A devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started, as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a that member is, is the inspiration for the magazines, to be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seemed like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking. Just join. They'll love it. Hello and welcome back. So I've just had a quick blast with a hairdryer and that's a good, you need to let things dry because you can see their true colours. I'm quite happy with this, it's looking good. So just want to finish this. So once I've blasted with a hairdryer I can see that maybe I needed a little bit more value in places. Okay, I'm going to go to the bigger bush. I'm tending to fiddle. I liked it down in this area where I wanted a little bit of um, detail and the small brush gave me s in nice gaps in between. But I just want now to add colour a little bit quicker. Oops, I've splattered, never mind. It's not a big deal. Right, so I'm going to look at shading. Let's see if I can add a little bit more colour here. So the great thing about using a few colours as well is that you can really work in and you can you know, when you stop and say, don't overwork it, you still need to be aware of this, but because I'm using so few colours, I'm not easily going to mix a muddy colour because the colours are the same. And that is a really useful thing. It means I can overwork a little bit more than I would do. 
and it's still going to not turn to that mud colour that you dread when you're working with a watercolour. That's usually when you've got too many pigments mixed together. Right, that looks a little odd because that colour is very different to what's in here. So I'll just move it in. I like this really light turquoise I've got. But I want just a little bit of colour. And this is where the kitchen towel... So I know that was seemed a very bit of dabbing, but for me, it's kind of it balances it a little bit more than it was before. Okay, so let's go back in here. So I've already started to darken this, but it wasn't dark enough. Damp brush. Still just thinking about shapes. White brush. And I'm often moving the pigment that I already have on. So it's it's trying to find that balance between the light areas and the dark areas. Because this is has to be darker if I'm doing the shape of the bear. It does have to be darker because it's where the skin folds as he's turned his head. Okay, that's better. But I don't want to overdo it. Okay, what I'll do is take some of that colour in. I want to leave this. Brush isn't wet enough. Tell when my brush isn't wet enough, it's give me too harsh lines. Right, I'm going to start to work from the bear and kind of come down here. So I'm going to use the ultramarine. And now they have that very dark area in the mouth. And the nose is obviously the darkest area. Just bringing back the shape which I had lost a little bit. Go back small. So here, I've just slightly lost the shape of the bear. And it is important to bring these shapes back because these are the bits which really make a difference to it looking like what it should do. And it's millimetres. Millimetres can make a difference, but the outer cheek got lost. I keep dabbing off my brush just so I can move the pigment rather than adding more colour. Now you'll see that's the reason I don't always use a big brush because it gives you those, I mean a small brush, sorry, a small brush is used for detail. If you want to get your colour on and have it move softly, you need a bigger brush. And a lot of people who will pick up a brush for one of the first times will often pick up a small, tiny brush. And actually, you'll get a lot more control out of a smaller brush. So making harsh lines easily dab off. Back in. The re I've swapped now back to the small brush because I want to so the nose is actually quite dark. So let's go and add the black neat. Just bring out those details because these are the features I'm looking for. So he's got his eye closed here. 
and the ear. Let's see what I can do with the ear. So his ears seem quite closed. So he's got a lot of fur around. Again, a bit of the blue. And I'm not looking at every hair. This isn't the point. What I'm trying to do is get it to merge and be part of the colours I already have. And again, it probably won't see what it looks like until it's dried. And then I can go back in. See, that's dried a lot lighter than I would have hoped. So I can go back in. But it is so much easier. I know I keep saying it. It is so much easier to go back in and, it, it, and add colour than it is to try and take it away. Shape of this ear is important. Okay, so if that's too light, let's add some black and the ultramarine. Just get some darkness. It's, it is a balance between trying to decide whether you need it to be darker and to lose the quality, the colours you've got. Right. I'm not sure I like the harsh lines. Okay. That's better. So let's go over and finish off over here. I don't need so much detail and I can still see quite like this colour I've got on here. So let's keep it. These are just details that I kind of, oh, so it's very even here, yeah, so I'm going to have to. These are just details I quite liked. I like the sharpness, the outline of the bear, which again I need to just possibly look at. But I was trying to do a grass or something. How does it finish it without it being solid? And it, it was kind of an accident, to be honest. It was just kind of see what happens and it, I really like that so these trees just adding to that magenta I've already got on again thinking about shape These can be a bit taller. Maybe. All right, that doesn't work there, so. Just add a little bit more color. And it can be just tiny amounts. I'm quite close to this, so this is where you get to do a lot of your fiddling. And I should have walked away and come back to it because then I would have a, a fresh eyes on it each time I came back. But I don't get that luxury when I'm doing it in one go. But it is a skill to use, to go and have a cup of tea, walk away, come back, revisit, and then you'll find that, you know, it looks different. You can see areas that you need to work on rather than 
jumping about and deciding on the spot and then going, mm, that didn't work. So I'm trying to work out how to, if this isn't working, this area here isn't working. So what can I do? I can, it's too solid. The colour is just not really working for what I wanted it for. So I'm trying to work out why. Why is it not working? And I think it's because I've got the shape wrong here. Okay. So let's go back in this time with a bigger brush and add some trees. Some colour. I think it's just two solid colours next to each other which just weren't, they were two of the same colour. So let's change it. That's better. Made a difference that did. Right. So this area is going to be quite light. Yes. But I want to, I can, there's a couple of things I need to do to finish and that is make those lines solid because I want a nice clean outline. And that can mean taking it over a little bit some clean and detail because then there's a nose bit here. It's not as clean as I would have hoped. So let's see what I can do. Okay. And this is when you get too close. Much sharper than I would like. Let's find the rest of it. So let's just whack on some trees over here, but I want to keep this a lot lighter, and a lot less detailed than the other areas. And take some of this colour out with my brush. I'm here, take this colour. Yep. So you can see this is a lot lighter, a lot less cluttered, a lot less detail. Again, bring it through to take that solidness out. Okay, that's done. Just gently with the colour I've got on and a wet brush, finish that edge. Go back in. Right, I need to add some of that white paint. And like I say, I tried doing it with a brush. Um, I tried speckling it. The best thing I found on this occasion was using a painting knife. Now, a lot of people may have done this before they put the trees on, so the trees are more solid. I quite like the white to go into trees, and anywhere that it doesn't work, I can easily take off. So, clean brush. Just going to load the back and the front, because I kind of forget which side I'm pinging it from. What I like about it is it gives kind of streaks sometimes. Let's try. The making funny noise then, That's because it's falling down. Oh. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I mean, I could have blocked off. Um, here, but I, it's white on white paper, I can dab it. And like I said, any areas I wasn't wanting the colour to go to, 
which is a little bit too much in the trees here. I can just go back in and fix. So yeah, it's probably a idea to do it before you put the trees on. But like I say, I actually like sometimes it being part of the trees and it becomes a whole. Okay, up oh, there's not fixed or fitting. Come on, wet, wet the brush. Good. Right, and here, I think this is the only bit I really want to go back in and take some of that white out. So it's pretty easy to work with. So I'm going to leave it there. The chances are when I come back to it, there's going to be areas that I want to alter and I want to strengthen or weaken. Um, but I'll leave it where it is for the minute. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's something I wanted to try. It's, it's a technique I've seen and I just wanted to have a go at. Um, so that's us for the next couple of weeks. So join us in the new year where there's lots of wonderful and exciting new workshops and demos. We say Merry Christmas. Come on, get, let's get a Merry Christmas. Okay, Merry Christmas, everyone.